The official Godzilla Minus One trailer dropped and it shows us some new footage and another cool thing is we also got the main cast list announced from Toho. You'll probably be hearing the same stuff. This is a dark, gritty, and grounded looking movie and yeah, that, that's what it appears to be, at least from what we've seen so far. Normally I wouldn't make this many videos about an upcoming movie, but admittingly I'm very excited and I was originally going to just tweet my thoughts, but then it got rather long, so I'm like, screw it, I'll just make another video. So the first thing that jumped out at me about the trailer, and the teaser too, but I, I didn't mention it, it's not about how dark thematically it seems to be, but how light it literally is. It, it appears that this movie will have a lot of action take place during the day which I'm really happy about. And maybe that's because I'm working on the history of Godzilla 2014, but I, I really don't like when too much action takes place at night. There are exceptions like the first Godzilla, but I need some daytime action, which this appears to have. Which by the way, the history of Godzilla 2014 video is coming along and it might end up being the longest video I've ever made. It's getting kind of out of hand, actually. I'm hoping to have that one out this month. I apologize for the delay on that. It's not the video itself that takes so long. It's just it's summertime, and that is usually a very busy time for me. It also doesn't help that my full-time job involves me being on a computer all day. So the last thing I want to do when I lock off or get home is jump on another computer and stare at a screen for hours. But anyway, in the video I made about the teaser, I was under the wrong assumption that this movie was going to possibly be tied to the original Godzilla as sort of a prequel. That is obviously not the case. This seems to just be Takashi Yamazaki's attempt at his own Godzilla origin movie that is in that same spirit of 1954's version. The reason I'm not calling it a remake of the original is mainly because the timeline is not the same. For example, in 1954, Japan was shown to already be relatively back on its feet from World War II. If you just go by the movie alone and knew nothing about World War II, you probably wouldn't even know there was a war. Also, in the original Godzilla, it's proposed by Dr. Yamane that Godzilla was a prehistoric creature possibly living in an undersea cave with others of its own kind, and then it was disturbed and irradiated by a hydrogen bomb test. Yamazaki's movie takes place right after World War II ends in the 1940s, and the United States doesn't have a hydrogen bomb at this point in history. So I'm speculating that this new Godzilla is irradiated by one of the two atomic bombs dropped by the United States, or this new Godzilla is simply awoken by the bombs, or by the war itself. Again, this is just my speculation. Whether it's the title of the movie or the press releases, they really want to hammer home that Japan is in a state of ruin. And now, to make things worse, they have Godzilla to deal with. A more obvious reason we can't call this a remake is the main characters have now been introduced. There's no Emiko, no Serizawa, no Yamane, no Ogata in sight. Instead, our lead characters will be Noriko and Koichi. Noriko is described as a woman living alone in a burnt-out post-war Japan, and she'll be played by Minami Hamabe. You'll recognize her if you've ever seen Shin Kamen Rider or Let Me Eat Your Pancreas. Koichi will be played by Yunusuke Kamiki. Koichi's character description here says, Although he survived the war, he lost his parents and met Noriko in a devastated Japan. By the way, I'm getting this from the official movie website. Don't worry, you're not having a seizure. The website randomly shakes while you're looking at it to emulate Godzilla's footsteps, which is pretty neat. Hamabe and Kamiki are quite familiar with each other already. They both star in the Japanese TV show Ranman. The rest of the Godzilla Minus One main cast is filled out by Yuki Yamada, Hidetaka Yoshioka, Sakura Ando, Munetaka Aoki, and Sasaki Kuranosuke. The director, Yamazaki, has been pretty active on Twitter, or now X, so if you want to see his responses to different questions he's been fielding, you should check that out for more clues, though he's not giving away too much. Something the trailer seems to indicate is that we're going to be getting a lot of individual death in this movie, and by that I mean we'll actually see Godzilla kill different individuals. I've talked about this before in some of my earlier videos, but in a lot of Godzilla movies we generally just see him destroying buildings and tanks, and it's just sort of implied people are dying, but we don't actually see it. There are exceptions, like the first Godzilla, we see him blast a few people with his atomic breath. GMK, poor, poor girl in the hospital. Shin Godzilla, we see that apartment complex get crushed and the family seemingly is killed. Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, he just 
takes that one. And of course, the badass Goro Gondo from Godzilla vs. Biollante. But even in those movies, we're usually getting, for the most part, that high-level view of the destruction. We're not getting too personalized. Here, I think we may be getting a more brutal, on-the-ground view, like we're watching a war movie. Which would work, because that's exactly how I felt about 1954's movie. At times, it feels like a war movie. That's what I got from the trailer, that this movie is going to try to have us empathize with people who have already been through enough horror and are now about to get plunged even further, deeper into hell. One of the interesting shots from the trailer had me thinking if maybe they showed too much here. I don't know if this is true about Japanese film culture, but I've always gotten the impression they don't care as much about spoilers. Again, I don't know if that's the case, but judging from how certain media is presented, they often spoil their own stuff. Maybe the whole obsession about spoilers is a Western thing. Again, I don't know. I'm saying this because this shot here is this supposed to be an atomic bomb going off with Godzilla standing right there? And possibly, right here, our main characters are also right there, about to just wear that explosion? Listen, I'm wrong a lot, especially when it comes to these trailer reaction videos. I get a lot of shit wrong, which is... My predictions are terrible. But maybe... I get a feeling this movie is going to have a depressing ending where perhaps the U.S. drops another atomic bomb in order to kill Godzilla, and our main characters are there to see it and, of course, die. Or hell, maybe this is just a nightmare sequence. I could be totally off, but that's just what this shot had me thinking. Seeing Godzilla swimming under the ship was cool. It appears there will be a pretty intense scene out in the ocean, so that'll be fun to watch. As far as the potential involvement of the U.S. military which is something the original Godzilla did not have. We see a quick shot of what appears to be a slideshow from the U.S. Department of War. It used to be called the Department of War until 1947. In the original movie, they get close to blaming Godzilla's existence on the U.S., but they don't quite go there, blaming H-bomb testing itself rather than the U.S. directly, even though the U.S. was the only one testing them in the Pacific. The Soviet Union's first H-bomb test came in 1953, but that was nowhere near the Pacific Ocean. Even though the U.S. occupation ended in 1952, Japan still needed to be careful not to potentially poke the U.S., as Japan was still vulnerable. Honda's movie even directly references that. Honestly, the Yamane presentation scene, some consider to be boring, is very interesting considering the time it was made. However, times have changed. Almost 70 years have passed, and perhaps now this movie will lay the blame directly at the U.S.'s feet without any indirect generalities. Putting history aside for a moment, I was reading that Japan's film regulator, Aaron, has already reviewed Godzilla Minus One and gave it a G rating, which means it's suitable for all ages. So some people might think, hey, maybe this won't be as dark as we're thinking. Out of curiosity, I tried to find their rating for the original Godzilla to get a reference point on their standards, but their website only goes back to 2009. Aaron has been around since 1949, so they would have rated Godzilla in 1954. I'm curious if any of you guys know what rating they gave it. I'm assuming it was G as well, though, because there's stories of kids going to see it. I mean, I thought Shin Godzilla was pretty dark, and that got a G rating too, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. As far as the marketing going on for the movie, the Yomiuri Giants will be doing a promotion for it on October 1st at the Tokyo Dome. They'll be installing a Godzilla statue, a costume Godzilla, and Chibi Godzilla will make appearances, and a special video will be shown to the crowd. Since the teaser was released a little while ago, they've had this statue present at Toho Cinema's Hibiya, the same theater that also has the end of the Heisei era statue of Godzilla when they killed Godzilla off. It used to be outside before the much larger Shin Godzilla replaced it in Hibiya Godzilla Square. Another cool thing that I saw reported on Wikizilla was that in a theater in Tokyo, they're going to be screening four Godzilla movies personally selected by Yamazaki, and he'll even talk after each movie. So far, he's picked the original Godzilla, and he's picked Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. The other two he hasn't selected yet, but damn. It really just seems like all the fun events only happen in Japan. Now, I will be in Japan when Godzilla Minus One comes out, and I'll try to make a video on my thoughts from the Japanese showing. Obviously, my Japanese language skills are nowhere near good enough to watch an entire movie without English subtitles, so a lot of the stuff said in the movie will go over my head. 
So my reaction video will probably be extremely short and it'll probably only touch on the action scenes and what I thought was being conveyed or said. It should be pretty funny. All that being said, this is an exciting time to be a Godzilla fan and I hope you're all enjoying it. As far as my channel goes, the plan is I will be releasing the History of Godzilla 2014 this month in September. There's a few anime videos I'm going to be working on and hopefully releasing soon. Then I will begin working on the History of Shin Godzilla. And not that most of you care, but this football season I'll also be posting reaction videos, if not every Sunday, most Sundays after Jet Games, as my New York Jets begin their quest to win a Super Bowl. It's happening. So everybody, enjoy the rest of your summer. And I'll see you later.